Hello everyone and welcome back to Microsoft Dynamics 365 custom workflow development course. This is lecture 1 of module 7 where we will see the best practices when you are dealing with workflows in Dynamics 365. Whenever you are writing a custom workflow activities, try to avoid the infinite loops. It is possible to create logic in workflow that initiates an infinite loop which consumes server resources and affects the performance. However, the limit of times the workflow will execute is 16 but still, but it is always advisable to avoid the infinite loops. And you will get an error message called this workflow job was cancelled because the workflow that started it included an infinite loop. Correct the workflow logic and try it again. In which scenarios in you will end up in infinite loop is because, for example, you have written a workflow which is getting triggered on create of an account. And in that workflow, you have one more step. And in that step, you are again creating the account. So in this way, you will end up in an infinite loop. Another best practice is to use workflow templates. If you have the workflows that are similar and you anticipate creating more workflows that have the same pattern, then save your workflow as a workflow template. That means you can create process templates, you can use the activate as property of the workflow. In future, you have possibility of creating similar processes, then it is always advisable to use workflow templates. And the next best practice is to use child workflows because if you apply the same logic in different workflows or in conditional branches then you can define that logic as a child workflow so you do not have to replicate that logic manually in each workflow or conditional branch so this helps make your workflow easier to maintain as well whenever you have a similar logic that you need to replicate in multiple places then it is always advisable to or write a child workflow because if in future certain portion of that condition gets checked or certain portion of that step gets checked so you only have to modify it in once in the child workflow and on top of that you also have an added advantage that if you have a child workflow and if you want to make any edits then you do not have to deactivate your parent workflow that means your parent workflow will still execute when you are editing your child workflow so even if your child workflow is deactivated then system will trigger your parent workflow and it will wait and it will create a system job for the parent workflow and for the child workflow step it will wait till the time child workflow will be activated back so another best practice is to keep the fewer logs so in order to save the disk space Clear the keep logs for workflow jobs that encounter errors checkbox if you do not need to keep this data. So only keep the logs for required workflow jobs. Do not keep it unnecessarily because that is going to consume your disk space. You might run into performance issues and other storage issues as well. So just keep the required logs if even if it is erroneous logs. Also, it is advised to limit the number of workflows that update the same entity. So, running more than one workflow that updates the same entity can cause resource lock issues. So, workflow failures occurs and an error message such as SQL timeout cannot obtain lock on a resource name. You can also use the notes to keep the track of changes. So, whenever you edit the workflow, you should use the notes tab and type what you did and why you did it this allows someone else to understand the changes that you have made because that would be helpful 
for the next person who will be taking care after you if you are on a leave or you have left the organization notes will keep the records of the changes that has been done on that workflow so this way you can maintain the update history of that particular workflow so these were the very few best practices when you are working with workflow so on that note i will end up this lecture and i hope to see you all in the next lecture where we see the similarities and differences between workflows and plugins so i hope to see you all in the next lecture till then bye bye and take care i thank you for watching this video till the end so if you have learned something new out of this video then please like share and subscribe to dynamics academy and also do not forget to press the bell icon so that you will never miss any update whenever we release a new video in dynamics academy youtube channel so on that note i take your leave and hope to see you all in the next video till then bye bye and take care